For this video, I'm doing something that I haven't done before. I'm going to attempt to make this paint by numbers look like a real painting. The painting is Luncheon of the Boating Party by Pierre Auguste Renoir, which is a famous impressionist painting that you've probably seen before. As you can see, the paint by numbers version has no blending or texture, which is a big part of the impressionist style in the original. I've found a high resolution version of the original on Google to help me see the details. I'm going to use a few different blending and texturizing techniques to try and match the colors and style of the original and hopefully end up with something that resembles an impressionist painting. The paint by numbers kit that I'm using is from Craft Ease. I've used their kits before and I actually have a whole other video where I do an unboxing and review of one of their kits. I'll link it below. For that video, I tried to follow the instructions as much as possible so I would have the most accurate experience for my review. So I painted it where you fill in all of each number before moving on to another number. While I was working on that, I thought it would actually be more fun to work on one area at a time, jumping from color to color and filling in each subject or section rather than jumping around. So that's what I'll be doing for this video. I decided to start at the top left and work my way outward from there because I'm right-handed. On the last paint by numbers that I did, I had a problem with smearing the paint since it was scattered all over the canvas. So I think this will help me be a little bit more neat and also take out some of the guesswork of trying to decide what to paint next. I've laid down the base colors and now I'm starting to deviate from the paint by numbers by adding in these stripes which you can see on the original but not so well on the paint by numbers. This kit uses acrylic paint, which is really nice because you can just keep adding layers of color until it looks the way that you want it to. Just make sure you don't use too much of your numbered colors right away because you don't want to run out. I'll actually be mixing in some of my own acrylic paint later on just so that I can be a little more generous with the paint. I'll also be changing the angle pretty soon. I started this painting in the evening so the lighting was very odd and this was the best I could do. For this hat, the paint by numbers kit came with a kind of orange color, but looking at the image on Google, I can see that there's a bit more of a golden yellow tone, so I'm going to be mixing that in. Here I'm using the yellow as a highlight to emphasize the shape of the hat. Once this first layer has dried, I plan to add additional colors such as brown, as well as using some dry brush techniques to add the texture that is going to show that it is a straw hat. So far my plan is to lay in the base colors as they're shown, but then before they dry I'm going to quickly use some blending techniques to get rid of the color blocked look. As you might imagine this took several days to complete and I actually did lose track of how many days I worked on it. On the second day I decided I needed a lot more paint because on the original I can see that there are a lot of different tones like blues and pinks that aren't really available to me in the numbered selection of paints that I got with the kit. I've been doing art for many, many years, so these are just acrylic paints that I had laying around. I'll list the additional colors that I added in the description, but just be aware that I'm using them for blending, so it's not going to be the exact color. When I finished filming on the previous day, I actually added in some of those yellow undertones so that they could dry overnight. My go-to blending technique for this painting was actually very simple. All I did was not clean my brush off when I went from color to color. This created a subtle and natural blending effect because the first color would slowly be mixed in with the second color as you move the brush around. Of course, I only did this while I was working on the same subject, for example, this canopy. When going from the canopy to the background or to something in the foreground, I did make sure to let the paint dry and also to clean my brush off in between to avoid it looking like the background was blending into the foreground. I'm also not thinning the paint out with water, I'm just using it as is and making sure that my brush is just a tiny bit damp. This helped a lot for getting good coverage, hiding the lines and numbers behind the paint, and also with filling in the texture, the woven texture of the canvas itself. The second blending technique that I used was to mix paint colors in the lids of my numbered colors as well as on the side. This helped with coming up with custom colors that I could see but that weren't available. 
And then the third technique, which I didn't use as often, was the dry brush technique where you lay down two colors side by side and then go in with a dry brush to blend the two colors together. I mainly used that technique for finishing up the faces when I needed really subtle blends between colors. Now I'm working on the bushes in the background, which as you can see are pretty blocky, but in the original they're actually very textured. So to mimic that, I'm first going to lay in my gradient of the lighting, so going from light to dark, and of course adding in those golden undertones, which you can see pretty clearly in the original. And then I'm using a small round brush with different shades of green to add in those leaf-like textures. There's also hints of blue towards the bottom, so I'm blending that in. I'm gonna let this first layer dry and I'll probably go in with some dry brushing to get a little bit more texture. So far I'm feeling pretty good about where this is going and I'm actually enjoying this a lot more than I expected to. Acrylic paint dries pretty quickly, so I'm trying not to work on too large of an area at once. I want to make sure the paint stays wet in the area where I'm working so it'll be really easy to blend. On the original painting, I noticed that there are some small sailboats in the background, so I definitely want to try and fit those in right here. Of course, since it is the background, I think it's important to not try and do too much detail because you don't want the eye to go there. You want it to be looking at the main subjects of the painting, which are the people. Next I want to add in the thin red border that you can see on the canopy. So I'm mixing a red that I have with the red that's in the kit and also using a very tiny brush. I ended up not filming painting the rest of the man's face because it was taking many layers to get it right, but I'll definitely show the process of painting some of the other faces. As I got further into the painting, I stopped laying down the solid block color and just started blending right away. I also found myself ignoring a lot of the lines and just sort of painting where I saw or where I thought that the paint should go. This would be a great exercise for improving your intuition as an artist. It's really helpful to be able to look at a color and know exactly what that color is and how you would make it if you had to out of just primary colors. So here's where the face is at with the base colors and some basic blending, but I think since she's right up front, I want to put in some extra detail. And just like with the last face, I did turn my camera off for part of it just because I feel like I do better without knowing that I'm being watched. But here's where we ended up and I think it is pretty decent. Try filming yourself painting sometime and you'll definitely see what I mean.
All right, so apparently there is a little dog in here somewhere. It's barely visible on the paint by numbers version, but definitely pretty obvious in the original. So I'm gonna do my best to fill that in. I typically avoid doing like pet portraits and stuff like that. It's like you either don't do enough detail and it doesn't look like fur or you overdo it and it just looks way too complicated. For this painting, I'm actually really happy with how the dog turned out. Here you can see the filming setup that I was doing. The box for the paint by numbers actually folds into something like an easel, so that's what I'm using to hold it upright like this. Moving back to the left side of the painting, I did some of the table off camera because it was very detailed and I was feeling a little bit stressed out by it, but overall I'm happy with how like the glass and the bottles turned out. What helped a lot with painting the objects on the table was adding more dramatic highlights and shadows. That really helped to differentiate the different items. This time I'm going to try and film as much of the painting of the face as I can. It's really one of those things where it's just kind of embarrassing how many times I had to go over it. The process actually looks a bit scary at some points and that's really the main thing is just to keep going until you like it. Don't don't stop just because you think it's ugly. Keep working on it until it looks the way you want it to. The hands in this painting were also pretty challenging. When I paint, I usually also have some line work in there. The nice thing about this impressionist style of painting though is that you can just kind of give the impression or shape of an object and our brains will actually kind of fill in the details, at least to a certain extent. Here's where I'm at so far with the paint by number version on the left and my version on the right. From a distance, I'd say we're doing pretty good. I have definitely lost track of time by this point. It got to where I sometimes wouldn't even record. I would just sit down for 15 minutes or 30 minutes and just try and fill in as much as I could just for the sake of getting it done. And for things I was less interested in painting, it definitely took me a little more time to get around to them like these people in the background. They were a lot less interesting to paint than the people in the front. I don't really have anything interesting to say about this part, so here are some fun facts. The original painting was made with oil paint, not acrylic, and it's much larger than the one that I'm doing. Each person in this painting posed on a different day, so he just combined them all into one painting. And it took 16 months for him to complete the whole painting. I remember taking an art history class in high school and my teacher being very adamant about this woman in the middle. Um, the main thing was that she is the only one who's making eye contact with the viewer. So you're supposed to relate to her and I guess empathize with her boredom. It's definitely one of those paintings where the more you look at it, the more things you start to notice. That definitely made it a lot of fun to try to recreate. By this point in the painting, I felt like I had accomplished what I'd set out to do, which was just to challenge myself and see if I could make a very simple paint by numbers look anything like the original painting. And I actually kind of surprised myself with how it turned out. I haven't had a lot of time for painting and I haven't really used acrylic paint in a while, aside from the last paint by number that I did, so this was actually a lot of fun. If you are an artist who's feeling a bit bored or uninspired lately, I would highly recommend that you try this out. It's a fun way to challenge yourself and test your abilities. And of course, the level of detail that you add is totally up to you. If you want to try something a bit easier, I would recommend a Van Gogh or other similar artists because you won't have to worry so much about small details. Craft Ease has lots of classic paintings to choose from, and I have links as well as a special discount code for you in the description. 
I would love to see other artists attempt this challenge, so be sure to let me know if you try it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks so much for watching.